Hello there, and welcome back to episode 2 of my tutorial series for Against the Storm. Today we're going to get a little bit deeper into winning one colony in this game. I left off in episode 1 with a pretty thriving and uh, stable setup, and if you want to check out how that all came together, just go down in the description box. There is a playlist link to be found there. And uh, we're going to continue from this point on. Our next goals are quite simple. We need to expand in a way that we're able to generate enough reputation points to win the game. We already noticed that we can generate reputation points by fulfilling the Queen's orders, which we can find in this menu here. We already did one of these. So the other two ones are building some trading posts and delivering some amber, that's money, and opening up some glades and uh, glade opening is one thing we're going to, to explore in this episode and also card drafting so let's get started and enjoy ourselves some so let's talk about the card drafting thing as you see here we get to select from three different buildings every one of these buildings has a production of three different items and you see those star icons behind that these star icons are basically giving you an explanation of how good that building is at producing something. As you see there, the lumber mill is very proficient at producing planks, but less proficient at producing the other goods, whereas the carpenter has a uh, balanced uh, performance all over the board, whereas the kiln has, here again, a highly specialized profile. All the items that you see here are quite overwhelming at the start. Don't worry if this is all like, whoa, what the hell is all that? We're going to get through all this, don't worry. So first off, planks are one item you should really uh, keep an eye out for. Planks, fabric, and bricks are the basic building blocks of any colony. The next important thing, which I personally always like, like to keep an eye out for, are simple tools. It's pretty good that we have the carpenter here, because he's a pretty good first pick. Planks will help you to expand your colony, and simple tools are very, very important when we encounter some threats out there in the wild, or if we want to just open some treasure chests. So we're going to pick up the carpenter building, and then we get the next selection there. So here we see a couple of extra cards, and uh, as you see there, things are quite complex to begin with. Every one of these items are new, but uh, <clears throat> you can really easily uh, navigate yourself towards the basic um, building blocks of your colony if you don't know where to start, and simple tools. The next important thing are is cooked food, as you see here, skewers, biscuits, and the like. These are items that are the next important thing after you got the basic building blocks for your colony. We're going to pick up the weaver here because it follows a nice trend, but the uh, cookhouse would have been pretty good too. Next up, we have some different gatherers. So you can take a break here and uh, there's no need to draft further. I do take a break here out of a very simple reason. I don't know what kind of resource nodes there will be available right now. We have claimed already the root deficit, we have already claimed the clay deficit. There are no other deficits here around. There's fertile soil, so we could select the uh, herb garden, which uses uh, farm fields. You can build farm fields only on fertile soil, so that would be one option. But I want to delay that. There's no hurry with your drafts. I often put these aside and wait for things to develop before I uh, really decide what I'm picking up. So you see that glimmer here? These are our new buildings. The carpenter will provide planks, the weaver will provide fabric. We don't have a building yet for bricks, but that's not a big problem. The crude workstation fills in the gaps. It's highly inefficient, but it does the job nevertheless. So we're going to put up the carpenter's blueprint and set it down somewhere around here. I try to put these items down in the vicinity of the warehouse to ensure nice logistics because 
Workshops cannot be moved anymore after they have been built, unlike most gathering camps. So for example, the woodcutter's camp can be moved without any cost penalty, and the shelters can also be moved, but this, they come with a wood cost attached to that. So, <clears throat> we want to open some glades. So, what's the thing with opening glades? You see here, there's uh, that mist inside that little thing. This is a glade. Whenever we open one, we get access to new materials. We don't know what resource nodes and other uh, thingies are inside there. And as a cost for that, the hostility of the forest will grow. You see there in the table here, there's uh, penalties for regular glades and dangerous and forbidden glades. So, dangerous glades, they look like this. Everything that doesn't have this icon, or even worse, that icon, are safe to open. Forbidden glades are a different cup of tea. So, we're going to open glades for now. So, let's take the minus lumber axe thing, and we're going to reduce all of this. Next up, I'm going to pick up the woodcutter's camp. You can click there and move it, and move it closer there. Or you can just click and press M to uh, move it directly. So, I now want to open those uh, glades as effective as possible. So, we pick up the axe icon, and now I hold down shift to... Uh, make the brush smaller and now I only mark the trees that I want to pick up so uh, here we go again this way our woodcutters will be very very precise about that you can also uh, put up uh, only cut down marked trees if you want to be really exact but most importantly we need to avoid opening glades unchecked so hold down shift to make that happen for all the woodcutter camps of yours so we're going to open up some glades next so, as you see there, woodcutters are now taking the most direct possible approach to that. Also, we have open workers. So, um, we also do have a case of homelessness. I tend to fix these things immediately, so let's just pick up another shelter and do that. And the other thing is, open workers, well, if there is no bigger building project, put them to work. To find some good spots for that, here's a little trick. Hold down the Alt key and you see all the uh, open work spots. So we see in the Stonecutter's camp and the Scavenger's camp there's a vacancy of uh, jobs. So I click the human's face and left click these and we have that done. So one worker remains to build the stuff and one worker is really all we need for now. So, it's a little bit late in the year to open glades, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much. So, we have opened up the first one, and uh, you have that little icon thingy that shows you what's inside the box. There's some meat deposit, some sea marrow, and some more fertile soil. Sea marrow is a fuel. It's basically like uh, burning fossils. That's pretty scandalous if you're uh, <clears throat> a aficionado for archaeology but whatever this stuff is really worth grabbing it it's also a nice source of stone the slick shell brood mothers are a good source of meat and leather but as you see there they'd require a trapper's camp we can draft that as you see there so here we have a first hint of what we'd like to pick up but i'm not drafting yet that's still a little bit too early i want to know what's inside the other mystery box before I do a final decision there. There we go. So here we have a dewberry bush deposit, root deposits, and uh, a cache, our first cache. Wonderful. So here we have to choose. We either can pick up berries via the herbalist's camp. Oh, no, we don't have a choice at all. Or we pick up the foragers camp, so we have access to the slick shell brood mothers. Or, and that's the third thing that comes up uh, here, we pick up the herb garden, which allows us to utilize all that fertile soil. And uh, seeing that I have two spots of fertile soil, that gives me the verdict that here I'll draft the herb garden. We're going to explore what we can do with roots and herbs, don't worry. But um, 
I always try to find a verdict at some point and uh, <clears throat> rest assured that there is never an easy choice right from the beginning. There's always some pro and some uh, and some con, some con on these decisions. So our next draft here, for example, we have the brickyard, but at the same time, we could all we could also pick up the cookhouse. The brickyard provides bricks. That's the last building block for our entire colony, alongside with some other fancy things. Where uh, while the cookhouse would provide lots of basic foods, which would be also quite amazing to have because, you know, food is very, very good. To put it very simple, every type of processed food multiplies the worth of the food. You basically put in a low amount of roots, meat, eggs, whatever, and then you get a much higher amount of processed food out of that. So you enhance the food by a lot and on top of that you even make your people happier because they like complex food more than basic food so that's an a, a total win-win situation and that emphasizes the dilemma that you're going to stuck in with the game constantly so it would be in my opinion a good choice to go for the cookhouse while it would be also a good choice to go for the brickyard by the way if you have no clue how to figure out what these buildings to do, do use the magnifying glass it allows you to check out how the recipes inside these buildings work you get to fiddle around what can go into the skewer and what can't and this way you can take a good impression about what you need and if these things are good for you so for example crystallized dew will always uh, we could use herbs we're going to plant herbs so that's going to be interesting so this building here the brickyard has not only bricks for us available also crystallized dew uh, by the way crystallized dew is a substitute for for metal of sorts you can compress the rain it's magically infused and then you can use it instead of uh, solid metal good stuff fantasy stuff but um this is a a basic idea if you could look here into the cookhouse you see that uh the mushrooms we could we got would go into the skewer the roots we will plant in the herb garden are good for skewers for biscuits we'd require flour we don't have that yet and uh all the things basically if you find that overwhelming we follow the basic route and that's what i'm going to do for this first playthrough i'm not going to go for the cookhouse because that would be a dip into the complexity we're going to take the bricks because then we have every basic building material available for the colony and that's a very very good thing this way we are available we are able to uh, fulfill the very first uh, orders and all so next thing again i'm picking up the big brush and I'm marking all those trees because we want to access all these materials ASAP. I'm <clears throat> telling them to avoid the glade opening again because under no circumstances I want to open this dangerous glade without preparation. But we're going to open it next year, I guess, nevertheless. By the way, we're going to check on out here on the small abandoned cache. Here with these, they are treasure chests. You either get and you either snatch the goods, reeds, that's good for fabrics, and roots, that's food stuff, or we send it over to the citadel, get money, reputation, and, uh, well, we don't get to keep the stuff. Reputation are victory points, so every cash you find can be transformed into victory points. That's quite appealing, so we can and uh, should use that. Also, we now have two more people to work in our colony. How did that come together? We picked the Lost in the Wilds perk last episode, which makes us gain one villager whenever we discover a new glade. Very, very powerful trade. So we're now able to set up our first farm. How about that? So farms are working like that. We're pasting down the herb garden. See, it's uh, already going there. And uh, you are also going to require farm fields. These go on top of fertile soil. I'm going to pick up one of my woodcutter camps, set it up there, and uh, paste down the brush here a bit, because there's a good chance that below these trees there's a bit more fertile soil, which we might use. So, 
it's almost storm season time. You see that blue ring is uh, depicting how much time we got left this season. And this is going to be the very first storm our colony will live through. Don't worry, we're not going to die. So I'm not going to place down any blueprints for the carpenter or the weaver or the brickyard right away. We're going to wait with that for now. I'm not a big fan of issuing too many uh, work orders at once because I want to get things done, you know? So, storm sits in. So, let's wait for a moment until we actually see what happens. And now, you see what's happening. The resolve of our folks is going down. How does that happen? Whenever a storm is happening, we have a looming darkness uh, effect. That's minus for global resolve times the hostility of our colony. Here, we are still on hostility level zero, so it's just a uh, tiny dent in our uh, in our overall resolve profile, so we don't need to worry too much about that. That's how it is right now. Later in the game, the storm will be a lot harsher, but this is a beginner round. It's just for us to discover what the storm means. When the hostility will rise, as you see here, on node on hostility 1, this node will be activated. So the uh, villagers that are not under the effect of housing will move slower, as you see there. To prevent it, you must fulfill housing. And on hostility 2, we have a uh, another debuff and so on and so forth. So the gist of it is the lower the hostility, the better. And uh, you can lower the hostility artificially by releasing uh, the woodcutters from their jobs. As you see here, woodcutters are raising the hostility or you can get rid of villagers. But that's a little bit unethical. <laughs> but jokes aside, there's not really much that you can do actively besides uh, unemploying your woodcutters. The only other thing is hoping for a increase of the Queen's Impatience because ironically enough the Queen's Impatience is also reducing the forest's hostility. So we are here salvaging more and more stuff but there's another thing. We don't have the necessary building materials to work with. So I'm speeding up a little bit, double time for a moment because there's not much more to do than to watch those materials to be produced. So, we are on a pretty good move here, but there's one thing that's, uh, that should be uh, always concerning us. Our food is on a down trickle. You see that red uh, line there? That means we are not getting more food out of these root deficits than we're eating. That doesn't come as a big surprise though. So here, well, it takes forever for these things to be built. So let's check it out in detail while, why that's the case. Here we are missing planks. And at the carpenter's place we are missing planks too so let's change something about that here in the menu you see our dudes were building different things left and right but we want to make sure that the planks are the first thing to produce so we're going to make a arrow up and then they'll make sure that now planks are the first thing to be finished this way you can also uh, set up priority profiles as you see fit it's a pretty nice way to configure your output. Next thing we're going to do, we get a new perk. Each year we get a new perk. So let's check this out. Mm. So every five villagers for with the need for education fulfilled. This is always something to be, well, I wouldn't say careful about, but it's a late game thing. Education is a service. Services are the last thing you'd do in a colony. That's when your colony is successful and, uh, via and and healthy. Family gratitude. We will get water skins whenever we gain a reputation point via resolve. That's when we gain a blue point because our people are so darned happy that we even get reputation via that. So let's pick that up. Water skins are useful. In the worst case, we can sell them to the trader. But we are pretty far away from gaining resolve via, via uh, from gaining reputation via resolve. But that doesn't really matter. Also, every year we get newcomers. Newcomers, you get to select which one you want, 
and uh, they always come with some presents. Here we're going to pick up the newcomer group with the most food. There are different characteristics. You might want some lizards, you might want some beavers. There's always something else to go around. We're going to take the, pe the people with the most food for now because we have kind of a down trickle with our food situation anyways. So there's homelessness occurring. First things first, let's make sure that we have enough shelters again. Keep in mind to build the shelters inside the yellow uh, area there. Every shelter hosts three people. We have four cases of homelessness, so we need that amount. So, let's uh, see what will happen there. I ain't got any tools so far. We could now either open more glades around us or wait until our, our, um, our materials are finished here. I choose the latter. Opening new glades is always improving the hostility, and my personal opinion is while there's something to grab in my home area, I'd rather grab that. So we're going to set up some farms here and uh, enjoy the farmer's life, and we're also going to set up a trading post quite soonish, because we need that for the other quests as well, but first I want to wait until those planks are finished. By the way, sometimes stuff is uh, stuck in the uh, warehouse here. You can force a delivery by clicking this icon if you notice that they're uh, stuck piling things there. But now we're finally getting there. Our prioritization has, uh, has uh, made the bottleneck go away. And now we finally built those things. So now we have two new uh, toys to play around with. So we have the small, the harp garden. And it's really important to employ people now here because agriculture works like that. During drizzle season, they sow out the fields. During clearance, they harvest the fields. And during the storm, they plow the fields. Plowing gives you a chance of double income via these fields. And uh, here we have the carpenter. And this is our, uh, our first more advanced workshop. First of all, we don't want the luxury goods for now, so we cross that out. We don't know if we want to build simple tools, so we cross that out. We know that we want planks. I like to configure my workshops uh, from the get-go like that. So let's employ a couple of people. Let's uh, set up two, so we have a bit more. We have a few workers left for the construction duty. So planks. Now we're setting up a limit of thirty. I do set up a very low limit on the crude workstation because I don't want the inefficient place to produce too much. And also I'm going to disable the production of planks altogether here because we don't want them there. Compare this. Eight units of wood go into two planks and here we have five units of wood go into two planks under no circumstances we want to produce there. Another thing, 30 seconds production time. 40 seconds production time. It's not only uh, material efficient, it's also time efficient. So, simple tools. Simple tools are what we need to open up that chest. If you check this out, chests can only be opened with tools. Infused tools are uh, the uh, souped up version of tools, basically. We can't produce them yet. So, let's check this out. We need either wood or blanks, check, and we need metal. We don't have metal yet. We neither have copper bars nor crystallized dew. So that sucks. We can't change uh, anything about that. So tools production is not possible for us. We have also new orders. You see those clocks ticking down, showing us that we can go for some new stuff. So let's check out what we can do here. So advanced trading wants us to produce trade goods and provisions. And we would get those rewards or resolve of the lizards. I'm going to uh, check out here if we actually have trading goods. So I'm holding down control now and this shows me the production of all my buildings. And I can see here now we have a production of luxury goods but we have no workshop that's capable of producing these things. That's very important when you uh, pick up your orders to uh, begin with. And therefore, I'm not going to pick this up. I'm going to pick up the Lizard's Resolve quest that requires us to keep the Lizards happy for a while. I find that way easier to achieve. Also, we get more Lizards and we get some Amber to begin with. And then we'll pick up the other order. 
So, brewery and ale, we have to have that building and we have to have the ale versus luxury goods. So, I have a workshop that products, uh, produces luxury goods, so this might be interesting. But here we even get a blueprint. Blueprint rewards are quite tasty. It's always a uh, pro and con, but for beginners, my advice is very simple. Always take the order that sounds doable and don't uh, fret around with things that you um that sound interesting on paper but are almost impossible to do in in reality because you you stumble over the recipe because ale ain't that easy to produce after all so here we're going to go for the packs of luxury goods fine so we have some new goals and we also can achieve another goal so lizards resolve 14 the lizards re resolve is at 10 there's a nice little trick we can we can use here. If we click that little arrow thing, you see here, these icons here are all the needs of the species. I'm going to cover that on another occasion a little bit deeper. But here you can also favor a species. So if we click that, all the other species get a uh, minus 5 on resolve, but one species gets plus on resolve plus five so here our job is to keep the lizards resolve above 14 done so we can now wait for that and as you see there now we have to keep that alive for 30 seconds so i'm going to place down another herb garden here let's rotate that accordingly so all the fields are inside the radius and uh, our woodcutters well, let's allow our woodcutters to go a little bit crazy this year. We're going to move that guy over here and I'm um, going to allow them to open up those glades here. So this is, a, this is a more sloppy way of opening glades if you don't want to go that precisely. Right now I don't want to go that precisely because my other hand is holding my mug of tea. It's uh, it's all depending on how... how um, how much in a hurry you are with opening the blade this way how we have it here is going to be the the chilled out way they'll open up the glade when they're done with that bunch the other way with the with holding down shift is if you are really in a hurry so let's press uh, pause again as you see there happy lizards already done so we can click that boom we get one point of reputation Queens and Patients go down, and we get to choose a new building. So, let's have a quick glance. That's pretty interesting to note for now, but uh, we don't need to go into that for for this very moment. I like to take a look if there's anything which strikes my eye like, oh, I need that. Right now, the clothier looks pretty neat and pretty tasty, but more about that in a second. First off, there's something to note here. The uh, lizards have turned blue. That's the moment when their happiness is so high that they are creating uh, reputation. Ah, oh, well, I have, I have to choose the blueprint now, okay, because I want to show you guys something. So I'm going to pick up the clothier because uh, they uh, they can produce coats. The bakery is useless because we ain't have access to flour. Biscuits and pie are not doable without flour. Flour is not doable without um, some workshop that can't produce flour, so we're not picking that up. The clothier, though, is producing coats, and cl coats don't need anything except for fabric. But back to the other topic. As you see here, high resolve plus 0.12 reputation per minute. So while the lizards are that happy, they are producing every minute resolve. We are winning the game by that. Also, our stonecutters camp has no deposits nearby. So let's move that into the vicinity of the sea marrow. That's pretty uh, important. And uh, we should really place down the other workshops we got now. So here goes the brickyard and the weaver. So now with these dudes, we'll have all the material production available that we'll require for the time being. These guys here still produce the fabric and the bricks until we have the specialized workshops available. And meantime, uh, in the meantime, our lizards are generating victory points per minute. That's a very, very uh, good condition to be in. Also, how about building a trading post? 
because that's a victory condition for us as well. So here we go. Trading post. Trading post does not need to be anywhere near your uh, infrastructure. There is never somebody carrying something outside your trading post. Not as of yet, that is. Also, check out, we have now our first level of hostility achieved. Every year you survive adds up hostility. Every villager you have adds up hostility. So all in all, you cannot avoid racking up hostility. Hostility is a constant uh, lowering you of lower decrease of your global resolve, as you see. Every level lowers that, but beyond that, it uh, only makes the storm fiercer. So we have now all these items uh, up here. So it's time to remove our workers from the crude workstation. So first off, before you remove your workers, check out if there's anything here in the bay. There's nothing here. If so. First remove it via this button and now we remove the workers and now we can also remove the uh, stockpiles and now we can also delete the building here so we get the wood back we used so one worker will now go into the weavers workshop specialization bonus for cloth we don't have specialists for cloth yet and the brickyard doesn't have any specialists as with all the workshops I do the same thing as I did before I disable everything I don't know if I want it or not yet, so I'm only enabling the bricks because I know that I want the bricks. I'm checking out here with the bricks recipe if we're using clay or stone. I strongly recommend you to turn on both on a map like this where we have both materials. And um, for the weaver, let's do the same. Make sure they have access to materials to work with. So we set up a more generous limit here. I set up the limit of 30, 20 is feasible too, just that to your own liking. And uh, now our production of uh, these basic building blocks of the industry is now specialized and we can have some fun with that now. So to have some fun with that, we're going to place down a clothier. The clothier is the first building that processes these um, materials even further. But uh, I'm going to introduce all these things in the next episode. So here, I'm going to leave you guys at that point. I'm going to drop the ball right here, before, even before the trading post is finished. Because next episode, I want to talk about trade, about the um, actual process of winning the game. We're also going to take a look on uh, at the first danger clade, I hope. And uh, yeah, lots of good, uh, good stuff going on. I hope you find this series helpful. If you have any further questions, please ask away. And I'm pretty positive that we're going to see some real goodness happening in the next episode. So drop me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, and consider subscribing to the channel. Also in the description box, like I mentioned, there is a playlist link if you want to start from the beginning. And also there's support links down there to Patreon, Paypal, and buy me a coffee. And as a free content creator, I have no big sponsors behind me, and I'd be really delighted if you'd give those things a look. And a big thanks to all the supporters out there. You are truly amazing. So, have a wonderful day, and I hope you're going to zap in for the next episode when it comes onto the YouTube. See you there, and have a good one.